One of my favorite eating fish of all time is considered by many to be trash or bait fish. But today I'm going to catch it, clean it, and make dinner out of it. Hopefully by the end of this video I'll show you that this fish not only is delicious, it's also insanely easy to clean and prepare for food. If you're new here and like what you see make sure you drop a sub and hit that like button. It's free and really helps us out. But enough talk, let's get into the video. What is up guys? Welcome back to another Tackle to the People video. Today as you can see it's very very cold. It's kind of windy. Not feeling great so I'm wearing a lot of winter clothes. I just came back from St. Bart's too, which is in the Caribbean for that long form video. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. It's a pretty good one. Today I'm with the one and only Albert, by Faith Fishing, check him out. Um, and the mission today is very simple. We're trying to catch mackerel. I know it sounds crazy for a lot of you guys. You probably think mackerel is a disgusting fish that uses bait, but hear me out. Mackerel is actually delicious if cooked properly. The Japanese love them, they eat them as sushi. You can smoke them. Um, there are a lot of ways to make mackerel delicious and we got a report that the mackerel fishing is actually pretty good right now. Um, we're looking at, this morning it was like, what was it, like 28 degrees? Yeah, it was brisk, it was cold. It was cold this morning. Water temperature is probably like 40s, so it's gonna be pretty cold, but we're hoping to get out there and get some mackerel because all the bass have gone, but the mackerel have remained. So we're, we're on the John boat today, we're gonna run to the spot and hopefully find some mackerel. Right, guys as you can see there's a crap ton of birds straight ahead of us which tells me that there's probably a lot of bait nearby which means there's probably mackerel nearby um, when, a lot of problems. when we just pulled in the spot these birds are going crazy they were flying all over the place and now they kind of settled down a little bit could be mackerel here possible looks like our fishiest spot so far with the most activity oh. So dumb, dude. I'm like, I'm like treating this reel like it's a bailless, just because I've been doing that for the last freaking week. What does that mean? Just drawing the drop? No, I'm like pulling the the line back. They're all here for me. This reel needs to be retired, dude. What is it that? This is the Ab Garcia Silver Max. That thing's like a $30 reel, right? Yeah. Is, Cheap know, reel. After our run-in with the birds, Albert and I explored a few more spots upriver. The reason for that is because we actually didn't have working sonar at the time. Unfortunately, my sonar was broken, so we kind of had to sight cast, and shallow water was our best bet. But after striking out at two more spots, we finally decided to just go blind and fish deep water. All right, guys, we're going to try out here for a little bit. Really sucks not having sonar. Makes your job a lot easier when you do. Just because right now we're kind of, we're pretty much sight casting. We're just waiting to see bait or birds diving or, you know, a lot of these times these fish are pressed up against the bottom really tight. And you wouldn't know that they were there. Oh, dude, I'm on. Oh, yeah. I'm on, dude. Let's see if there's any more. I think it's just the one. Oh, Let's go. You're on? Yeah. Alright, drop the troller. I got two, dude. Oh, these are good ones. They're big. Good size, good size. Alright, guys, we found them. I'm killing the motor. Albert's gonna spot lock us with the troller. What? In case you guys have never seen a mackerel before, this is what we're working with here. Super pretty fish. Usually great striper bait. Great striper bait. These are green max. There's a couple species of mackerel that are in New England. They're chub max. These are green mackerel. There's frigate max. But limit here in Massachusetts is 20 per person per day. And we're at four. Four out of 40. So we're just gonna stick around until we fill up the cooler. Dude, goodbye. Yeah, and that was just dropping down right below us. Albert's on. Dude, 
Yeah. Hubbard says he's got a full stringer. Dude, you're drag. <laughs> got a little drag pulling, huh? Dude, those are chubs. Oh yeah, those are fat green max. Those are thick max, dude. So we're at four, and you just put three more, so we're at seven. If I can land on Oh, another four. Oh, I snagged one too. That bottom one's fat. I'm on. I'm gonna toss that little one back. So we're at eight. Look at that one, dude. Yeah, these are good size. That's a good size mackerel, dude. Oh, I just lost one. Dang it, that was a good one. What is that? Five, six. Seven. Dude, this spot always gives good vibes. Yeah, we're on again. It's a little bit further ahead. That's where they are. That's where the stacks are. So guys, the key is when you hook up on a mackerel, when you feel one fish, don't reel super fast, reel quite slow. Because usually what happens is the rest of the school follows suit and they start eating the other hooks on the sabiki rig. And you can end up with a full stringer like I'm pretty sure I have right now. Whereas if you just take one, if you just get one fish and you just horse them in, you won't get the rest of the fish following suit. So right now I got one. Oh, I got three. Okay. But these are good size ones. One. We're at eight, right? That's nine. We'll make 11. It's gonna be built to the first half. Yeah. <laughs> Not even halfway. I know, dude. That's one. Let's see if there's any more. Once they set, though, it you can fit more. It's one. Good morning, sonar. <laughs> Five minutes ago. Dang, I wish you had sonar. <laughs> I was getting my hits more more straight out. Yeah, I took a sample. Oh, yeah. I got a bunch. I got a bunch. Oh. Chandelier? Dude, I got a chandelier. Triple. Twelve. I got a little nasty keep on it. That one's a fatty fatty right there. Thirteen. This guy's a fatty. Oh dude, didn't even make it down. <laughs> didn't even make it down. I was like, I should be hitting bottom right now, and I'm not. They're right below us, if you just drop. That's another three. 
Another triple. Yeah. There's one. No, I'm just dropping. I'm just reeling up, dropping, reeling up, dropping. Oh, we got we got another follower. Yeah, we got three. They're still here. Oh, we got a quad. Scout keep 18. This is 19. There's one. Yeah. One, two, three. Any more? I think that's four. Four. It's another quad. 22, 23. Oh, those are nice ones. I got all dinks. Eh, some of those are keepers. All right, guys, we just hit our two-man mackerel limit. 20 each, that's 40 mackerel. The cooler is full. Now we're gonna head back to the boat launch, throw this boat in the trailer, head back, get these guys cleaned, and get these guys cooked. What's up guys? So we are back home and we got our cooler full of mackerel. Now I'm going to show you real quick just how we process them. It's actually ridiculously easy. Uh, mackerel actually have tiny, tiny, tiny scales. So you don't even have to scale them. You won't even notice them when you eat them. I'll show you uh, how I clean them. And you know, if you guys have a better way to clean them, a more efficient way, you know, let me know in the comments. So we have our mackerel right here. Um, the colors faded a little bit, but this is typically what they look like, you know, after they've been out of the water for a little bit. Um, so the first cut that I make is actually, I go from the anus all the way up to the throat. I just make one cut. And you don't want to cut too deep, otherwise you're going to puncture some of those guts. Then you get to this part with the two fins here that's actually pretty hard, so you just got to put a little elbow grease and go through that section. And then you're through. Then I cut all the way through up to the throat. And then that's the only cut you need to make. So once you're there, all the guts, you can just take it out with your hand or, you know, with whatever you're using. Um, you can also do this with scissors really easily. Um, you don't have, even have to use a knife, just use scissors and just cut right up through the belly. All right, so now that our, uh, our mackerel's guts are removed, I actually also like to take the fillet knife and just go, um, there's actually that bloodline right up there. I just run my knife through it just very lightly, just so that you can use your finger to get it out. Just take a hose or any running water and just rinse out the cavity a little bit. There's a lot of blood just because we didn't bleed these mackerel right when we caught them. If you see kind of Japanese cooking videos, a lot of times they have like a little toothbrush um, and that's what this is for. They use the toothbrush just to kind of rinse out the cavity and they scrub it a little bit. And that's it. That is our cleaned mackerel hole with the head still on. Now I'm going to show you uh, the other way, which is if you want to remove the mackerel head, which many of you probably will opt to do. I give a lot of these fish away, and a lot of people I give them away to actually prefer the head on. So that's the reason why I clean them with the head on sometimes. But this is how you do it if you remove the head. So we actually just go right behind that fin over there make one cut just like so turn the fish around same thing right behind that fin make another cut and then you can cut the head right off and actually you can remove a lot of the guts just with that head one with that one cut so the vast majority of the guts and the head have been removed just from that one cut and we have pretty much a clean macro cavity just from that singular cut and for good measure, you know, you can cut the cavity. 
open through the anus just to double check, make sure everything's gone. And if you want to also take care of that bloodline. And that there is another beautiful clean mackerel. All right guys, we'll do another one, removing the head. This is, this, these ones go by super quick. Just cause all, all it is is basically two cuts and everything comes out. And all those guts come out. Just like that, super easy. And then for good measure, if you wanna get that bloodline out, Ready for consumption, ready to cook. There actually is a little membrane of skin on the outside of the mackerel, but I honestly leave it on every time I eat it. You, you hardly notice it. All right guys, I'm actually gonna vacuum seal a couple of these just because I give so many of these fish away. Um, I got this portable uh, pack back vacuum sealer that fits into a little backpack. I'm not sponsored by these guys or anything. Um, they did send this to me. If you guys buy fish from the supermarket, chances are it's been frozen and thawed and frozen and thawed probably like at least three times before it actually gets to the supermarket. So um, that's why when you get fish, it typically only lasts like a day or two in the fridge tops before it starts to really smell. But with these fish, because it literally was caught this morning, it, if I vacuum seal it, it can last up to a week. Um, and that's, that's not even with me bleeding the fish. So really just goes to show that kind of the supply chain for fishing and selling and buying fish is a little bit screwed up um, just because it changes hands so many times and it's mo pretty much all the fish that you get um, at the grocery stores is, is not fresh fish. So um, since I'm gonna be giving these away, I wanna make sure that I can seal in the freshness and the people that I give them to, they can enjoy this fish for uh, up to a week. I'm gonna take this bag. Get it to the desired length and give it a nice seal only. And we're gonna seal it until we hear three beeps. That's it, now we have our seal. And then I'm gonna cut the bag. So, now our bag is cut to the desired size with an open side and I put the fish in there. There is our three mackerel, nicely positioned the, the way I want it. Now we're gonna line up that mouth opening with the bag and close it. Vacuum seal. And there it is. It's just that easy. Three beautifully sealed mackerel ready to give away. All right guys, hopefully that was cool to see. And again, this is really fun for me just because as I mentioned, mackerel is a fish that a lot of people turn their nose to, but in reality it is delicious. And I'm gonna show you guys how to make it for yourself. And you'll never feel like this fish is a trash fish ever again. All right, let's get to cooking guys. My favorite way to prepare this fish is Korean grilled mackerel. No, I am not Korean, but I kid you not, every time I go to a Korean restaurant, I order mackerel prepared this way. I dream about this dish. This is the at-home version. The traditional version is grilled, but I'm gonna be using a cast iron pan to give it a nice sear so the final product is crispy, smoky, and delicious. What I'm doing here is actually butterflying the mackerel. You basically cut straight through the ribs along the spine and flatten those fillets right out. 
As you can see, I'm cutting to the left and right of the spine and just slowly working my knife all the way to the tail of the fish. What we're trying to do is lay both fillets out perfectly flat because we're gonna sear the whole thing, almost like a hamburger. Once both fillets are perfectly flat, now we need to cut out the spine and remove it entirely. I just cut underneath the spine and slowly work my way towards the tail. Then I just break the spine with my hands or I cut it off. You wanna leave the tail there because it's really nice for a presentation. And there's your beautifully butterflied mackerel. You can also cut away the rib bones. I leave them in because I don't mind eating around bones and that way it wastes less meat. But if you want a boneless butterflied mackerel, then you gotta cut the ribs away. Mackerel also have pin bones on their lateral line, but these fish are so small that you won't even notice them. For bigger mackerel, you'll probably have to take them out and it's very easy. Once you're done, your mackerel should look like this at which point it's time for us to season these guys. All we're doing is adding a very thin layer of salt to both sides of the fish. Again, I'm not Korean, so I'm not sure how true this is, but I'm told that this recipe comes from a traditional style of preserving mackerel for later consumption. Some recipes tell you to salt this fish for hours and hours. I just give them a very thin layer 20 to 30 minutes before I cook them. 20 to 30 minutes later, the mackerel should look like this. They have this little sheen on them and the color is like a blue green now it's time to cook them up. Like I said, traditional recipe uses a grill, but for the at-home version, we're gonna use a cast iron pan and we're gonna get it really ripping hot. We want that skin to get nice and crispy, so we're gonna do it hot and fast, about a minute, two minutes each side. That skin will rip, so we wanna make sure that the first place that we place it is where that fish is gonna cook. I don't wanna be moving the skin around, otherwise it will tear. I'm also gonna press the fish down just because I want full contact with that cast iron pan. I want the skin to be nice and crispy in every single spot. Two minutes later, I decided to give it a little flip and I was too early. The skin tore. When you're cooking in cast iron or carbon steel or even stainless steel, you really gotta make sure that the meat that you're cooking, or in this case, the fish, it self releases. Once a nice crust develops on the skin of the fish, it will naturally release itself from the pan. So now I know I should probably give it maybe another 30 seconds to make sure that that skin really crisps up. Also, I hope this goes without saying, but I hope you guys don't try to do this with Teflon. Not only do you not get a good sear with it, but if you heat up Teflon past a certain temperature, it starts to be cancerous. And these next guys came out way better. I cranked up the heat and I let them sit for a little longer and just look at how nice and crispy that skin looks. This is what we wanna go for every single time. Finally, we can at last eat our delicious catch. All right guys, so we have our mackerel grilled to perfection here, or seared to perfection here. It's not actually grilled. Whenever I've had them in restaurants, they always garnish with a little bit of uh, fresh squeezed lemon juice. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna cut off a piece of lemon. And this is perfect because it just contrasts the oiliness of that mackerel. It's super, super good. Now, I'm going to add three side dishes today. Uh, some Korean kimchi, some Korean pickled radish, and then some Korean cucumber. All these are really nice acidic vegetables that really help contrast that oily flavor of the fish. So we got some Korean cucumber, some radish, the kimchi. So guys, this is our final product. My mouth is watering. You know, normally you serve something like this with rice, but you boys trying to stay lean. So I can't wait any longer, I'm gonna dig in. I mean, that's just magnificent, it's so good. Nice, salty, oily. Let's try it with the cucumber. It's the perfect match. Now, if you're watching this and you've never had food like this, I would invite you to seek out your closest Korean restaurant and try to find something like this because it's hard to beat, in my opinion. I, I would pick this over expensive tuna most days. Most days I would pick this over expensive tuna. It's just so interesting because it's such a look down upon fish. It just goes perfectly together, this whole thing. But I'm gonna end the video. I'm kind of having a moment. I'm gonna go to town on this dinner. Yeah, not much else to say. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. I mean, I feel super spoiled. It's like, it's a weekday night. I should not be eating this good. You know, I hate to fulfill every Asian stereotype about fishing, but if I went fishing for someone and they were using a mackerel as bait, a fresh mackerel as bait, 
and we were gonna throw them back at the end of the trip because they had extra bait, I would take them and I would eat them happily. I've done that before. I have literally done that before. Shout out Camferio. Last time we went tuna fishing, he had all this extra mackerel and I just took them all. I got no shame. This fish is amazing. 